This is Jordan Hare Stadium, home of the Auburn Tigers where the spirit of War Eagle has created a unique bond between these proud fans and their football team. Nineteen eighty four saw that relationship grow stronger than ever. It was a year that began with great expectations and culminated with Auburn's third straight bowl victory. In the months that intervened, the Tigers experienced both adversity and great elation and handled each with class and dignity. This wasn't to be the easiest of seasons, but it was a year that saw the continuation of the winning attitude Pat Dye has indelibly etched into the fabric of Auburn football. In August, the Tigers entered the season with high hopes, stemming from their 1983 SEC championship and Sugar Bowl victory. <laughs> On top of that, they had been selected to meet the defending national champion Miami in the second annual kickoff classic. Why not be optimistic? Auburn was preseason ranked number one and had an offense built around explosive Bo Jackson, the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy. But Pat Dye knew he had a young team and faced a killer schedule. Those stark realities soon became apparent with two opening season losses. Even more devastating was an apparent season-ending injury to Bo in the Texas game. While some lost hope, Coach Dye took a positive approach. You know, when you, you, you have a, somebody as strong as, uh, and dominant player as Bo was, that when you lose one like that, then the rest of them become closer and, and uh, rely more on the team aspect and, and the intangibles involved around the game, more so than just pure raw ability. Others did step forward to take up the slack. Junior quarterback Pat Washington took on the burden of running Auburn's wishbone offense. Under his direction, the Tigers led the SEC in total offense and rushing. It marked the second straight season the Tigers had the conference's top ground attack. Fullback Tommy Agee, although only a sophomore, was now the veteran of the backfield. His blocking and leadership proved invaluable. Powerful Collis Campbell, injured much of 1983, moved from fullback to halfback and became the team's second leading rusher, averaging nearly six yards per carry. Of all the Auburn backs, sophomore Brent Fullwood would make the biggest statistical impact in 1984. His electrifying speed and quickness took the conference by storm. He led all Tiger backs in rushing and finished the year as the leading kick return man in the SEC. The first real challenge for the rebuilt offense came against Tennessee. As Bo provided moral support from the sidelines, Auburn fans discovered still another running back. He was Kyle Collins, a former walk-on, known more for heart than for speed. 
His first touchdown run was the result of pure desire. Before the day was over, he scored twice more and earned SEC Back of the Week honors. It was an inspiring effort that affected the entire team. You know, scoring three touchdowns and coming from a walk-on to the starting halfback position and having a game like I did, it was just, uh, it was very overwhelming. Tennessee soon discovered that Auburn's defense was also overwhelming. It limited the Volunteers' ground game to just 74 total yards and pressured Tennessee quarterbacks into three interceptions. It takes 11 mad men to play on defense, you know. Defense is, people on defense never get that much credit, you know. They always give credit to the offense because they're scoring the points, but defense is where you have to be a little crazy, a little looney tunes to play because when you look at it, running into somebody all the time is not fun. While it was not a fun day for the volunteers, it was a giant step forward for a young Auburn team. It scored an impressive victory over a tough SEC opponent and served notice to the rest of the conference that the Tigers were back. Get your plan down. Don't have any questions when you leave a field. Know your plan and be ready to carry it out come Saturday. 257! The man responsible for Auburn becoming the most successful team in the SEC the last three years is Coach Pat Dye. His game plan for success is simple and direct. You've got to start with discipline because um, in, in football and life or anything that you try to do that's a little difficult, it requires discipline to, to reach your ultimate goal. While Coach Dye is a firm believer in discipline, he is equally concerned about his relationship with his coaches and his players. We are a strong believer in loyalty to each other, uh, players to coaches, coaches to players, uh, coaches to each other, and all of us to Auburn. I think that that's, uh, that's where it all starts, is that uh, caring for each other and loyalty to each other and uh, the love for Auburn. When, uh, when you have that, then I think that the rest of it falls in place. The unity Coach Dye strives to create on the practice field extends to life at Sewell Hall, home for all Auburn athletes. Here, team members live together in a comfortable setting that offers all the comforts of home. Living at Sewell Hall helps create a sense of team identity that would be impossible to obtain in any other setting. Of course, talk often turns to football, but that happens almost everywhere on the Auburn campus during the fall of the year. On the plains of Auburn, the traditions and spirit that surround the football team get in your blood at a very early age. The Auburn students' feelings for their football team are intense, to say the least, and can be summed up simply by the traditional rec tech parade and pep rally. Georgia Tech has got a fine football team, better, the best team that we've played in the three years that I've been at Auburn, and we're going to need all of you Saturday to help beat them just like you did Tennessee. Game days at Auburn are the site of the biggest family reunion in the state of Alabama. The Auburn family gathers hours before game time to renew acquaintances and make new ones. Every week, they gather for the Tiger Walk, where the team journeys from Sewell Hall to Jordan-Hare Stadium, 
It's an event with special feelings for the team and the fans. We all gather and we walk over, and it's a chance to get personal with the, the fans. You know, they get to see you before you put on your headgear, and, you know, they get to know who you are. So, uh, you know, it helps you out as far as, you know, having that unity, not only with just the players, but with the fans, too. Once inside Jordan-Hare Stadium, in front of another sellout Auburn crowd, the feeling is unforgettable. Good afternoon, everybody, from Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn. It's the 87th meeting between the Auburn Tigers and the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Auburn fans set new attendance records in 84, but more importantly, they supported this team with their hearts as well as their voices. All the fans are behind you, and Auburn's behind you. All the Auburn fans across the nation are behind you, and it's just it's the most unreal chill and just excitement I've ever felt in my entire life. Statistics show that Auburn has become nearly impossible to beat at home. Some of the credit for that must go to the fans. When the stadium rocks, the Tigers roll. Go Tigers! <laughs> Against Georgia Tech, even with the home crowd support, Coach Dye had concerns about his offense. How about the option, Coach? Take it outside. 39. All-America candidate lineman Steve Wallace had just been lost for the year, and quarterback Pat Washington was also out. It was up to senior Mike Mann to quarterback his team to victory. In his first start at Jordan-Hare Stadium, Mike led an all-out offensive assault that put 41 points on the board in the first half. Then he stung the Yellow Jackets with a 56-yard touchdown strike to Freddie Wagand that sealed the victory once and for all. Throughout the year, the offense sought to maintain its consistency despite nagging injuries. The leadership of guard Jeff Lott and tight ends Jeff Parks and Ron Middleton provided a foundation that enabled quarterback Pat Washington to throw for more than 1,200 yards. It was the most yardage gained passing by an Auburn quarterback since Pat Sullivan's 1971 Heisman Trophy season. Pat's three favorite receivers alternated at split end bringing in the plays from the sideline. All were considered starters. Speedy Clayton Buford was the veteran of the group. Trey Gaines became known for his good hands and good moves. Of the three, freshman Freddie Wigand proved to be the most explosive. He became the most prolific freshman receiver in Auburn history, outdistancing Terry Beasley's first year receiving record by almost 200 yards. Fortunately for Wigand and Auburn fans, it's just the beginning of his Auburn experience. The Auburn experience encompasses much more than what takes place on the playing field. Auburn, one of the truly outstanding universities in the South, is respected nationwide for its commitment to excellence in education. I think that you can go into the academic area of Auburn and you can find that it's uh, got 
it's a long and rich tradition from an academic standpoint and uh, and that is that is continuing to grow and and uh, and mature and I think under the leadership of Dr. Martin that uh, Auburn's greatest days are in front of them. The educational opportunities at Auburn are stressed to all athletes because even though a large number of players get a chance at pro football, an Auburn degree lasts forever. Coach Dye realizes the importance of an education and he stresses academics to his football players. And so for the student athlete who wants to come to a top-notch university and wants to get a good education and at the same time play for a championship quality football team, then I can't think of a better place for him to come than Auburn. All-America linebacker Greg Carr has certainly made the most of his four years at Auburn. The most honored player in the SEC this year, he was one of the NCAA's top five student athletes for 1984. For three years, he set the tone for the defensive unit. The key to a lot of the success the defense has had this year has been playing aggressive football and playing with a lot of intensity. But there's only so much the coaches can do for you in getting you prepared for the game, and the rest of it has got to come from the individual. And I think Coach Dye has recruited individuals here at Auburn that have a lot of class, that have a lot of character, and who aren't going to quit in the tough situations. Those were exactly the type of players that took the field for the Auburn defense in 1984. This group also overcame adversity as it matured into the kind of aggressive, hard-hitting unit the Tigers are known for. It sustained the loss of several key performers. All SEC cornerback David King, strong safety Tom Powell, and cornerback Jonathan Robinson, among others, missed time with injuries. Their replacements made up for any inexperience with desire, intensity, and teamwork, and the opposition felt the effects. The cornerstones of this defense anchored the front line. Harold Hallman, a member of the AP All-SEC team, is the strongest player on the team and one of the best nose guards Pat Dye ever coached. He was part of a line that held the top three spots in tackles among down linemen in the SEC. Defensive end Kevin Green, a walk-on in 1980, who once considered himself too small to play, broke the team record for sacks in a season, setting a standard for desire that future Auburn players will aspire to. While Green set the standard for desire, it was all SEC tackle Ben Thomas that set a new standard of excellence. He simply dominated the line of scrimmage, recording more tackles than anyone in Auburn football history. It was this kind of intensity that was in the air the night Auburn met Georgia in their annual renewal of the South's oldest football rivalry. Playing in front of a national television audience, the Tigers hit the field on an emotional peak. Fullback Tommy Agee led a devastating ground attack with a 100-yard-plus performance. When Pat Washington ran in for Auburn's second touchdown of the game, the defense geared up to protect what the offense had created.
Ben Thomas, Gerald Williams, and the rest of the defense clamped down hard and sent the Bulldogs back to Athens with this message. This was the night of the Tigers. It was an emotional victory for a team that many left for dead after the first two weeks of the season, but came back to claim their spot among the top 20. The victory showed the nation what Auburn fans have known for years. It's great to be an Auburn Tiger. The most pleasant surprise of the year was the return of Bo Jackson. Originally not expected to play again this season, Bo was back in just seven weeks. His return was vintage Bo. Against Alabama, quick, powerful bursts into the tied secondary put him over the 100-yard mark for the day and into third place on the all-time Auburn rushing list. The Auburn-Alabama rivalry is among the most intense in all of college football. year, the Tigers were going for a third straight victory over the Crimson Tide. But this was not to be Auburn's year. Playing their finest game of the year, Alabama stopped Auburn in the final minutes and the Tigers fell just short of their goal. They felt a deep sense of hurt and frustration. But it is not the Auburn way to dwell on the past, but to look to the future. A new challenge. The Arkansas Razorbacks loomed ahead in the 26th annual Liberty Bowl. For motivation, the team turned to Coach Dye. Coach Dye, he's a team motivator. It's like, if nobody can motivate you, sit down and talk to Coach Dye and hey, you're on top of the world after the conversation. And he just tell us before the game, go out and do the best that you can and let everything else take care of itself. The Liberty Bowl marked Auburn's third straight bowl appearance. From the start, it was obvious this team had put the Alabama loss in perspective and was totally prepared to meet the Razorbacks head on. Leading the way was Bo Jackson, who gave the Liberty Bowl MVP performance. The defense applied relentless pressure on Arkansas quarterbacks, forcing four costly interceptions. In the fourth quarter, a 39-yard Bo Jackson explosion provided the winning margin, and the Tigers had won their third consecutive bowl game. The triumph also made Auburn the winningest team in the Southeastern Conference with 29 victories the last three years. This was a year when the unique relationship between this football team and the proud people of Auburn came into sharp focus. There is a, a true deep uh, feeling uh, among the Auburn people for each other and there's a true and deep feeling for the school that uh, carries over on the, on, the, on the football field. 
And the thing that we've tried to do with our football program is to, to build a, a football program that measures up to the standards of the school. Averaging 10 victories a season since 1982 makes the last three years the most successful period in Auburn history. The Tigers' success is evidenced by a 10,000-seat expansion to Jordan-Hare Stadium. And with the consistency of excellence established the last three years, the future holds the promise of continued achievement. It began in 1981 with Auburn's commitment to excellence and Coach Dye's promise to give Auburn the kind of football program it deserves, a program with class, integrity, and success.